Welcome to the first part of the Chicken Wire Ghost Bee tutorial. I'm Sandy, I'm from Spiral Crafts and Workshops and today we're going to be focusing in the first video on making the head and the body of the bee. In the second tutorial we'll look at making the wings and in the third tutorial we'll look at putting together your antennae and getting those on and then you will be done. If you want notifications for those next videos that are coming up, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the, the bell down below, and they'll let you know when those are up. And if you've got any comments or questions, you can leave those down below as well, and I'll get back to you with either a written answer or I might put a short video together for the complicated answers. But to this, in this video today, I'm going to look at making the head and the body. I'll run through the tools and materials you need for the whole of the bee and then we'll, we'll focus in on getting on with the making and getting you started. So, let's go. Okay, I have moved on to the hands view so you can see closely what my hands are doing as we go through the making of the bee. But let's start with the tools that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a pair of tin snips. You're gonna need a pair of wire cutters. And you're gonna need a pair of pliers, you can either use flat nose or chain nose, that's easy either way. I've got my magnetic gadget which is telescopic, that picks up the, the loose bits of wire as I'm working and keeps me tidy and clean. I've got a pair of leather palmed gloves, if you can get leather backs all the better but you definitely need leather palms when you're dealing with the chicken wire. You will need a ruler at least 30 centimetres long, you'll need a Mark a pen so that you can mark the wire so you know where to cut and that is it on your tools apart from your safety glasses and some sort of canvas apron or canvas clothes which I've already got on to protect your clothing and protect your eyes while you're working. So because these are so important I'm just going to put them on now while we run through the other things that you're going to need in the materials department. First thing you're going to need is the chicken wire. Now this is for the body of the bee, so it is 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. I will put a list of the measurements down below in the description so you can pick them up from there as well. So if the, for the bee body video you will need 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres of chicken wire and leave it in a, a rolled position. For the wings, when you do the wings in video two, you will need two pieces of chicken wire that measure 18 centimeters by 13 centimeters, and you want to flatten those out so that they're they're nice and sort of flush to the to the tabletop. I wouldn't actually do that without gloves on because I can already feel it getting into my fingers. So you want two pieces 18 by 13 centimeters. Then, when you get on to video three and you're doing the antennae, the materials you need are two pieces of one millimeter galvanized steel wire, and these are 30 centimeters in length. So you want two of those, one for either side of his head. And that is all you need to make your ghost bee. So let's get started. To make the body, you need to go and cut yourself the chicken wire tube from your main roll. Once you've done that, you can use your snips to do that, and once you've done that, you'll come back with something like this. And you want to start connecting the body so that we've got a tube. So I'm just going to open it up a little bit. It will fight me, and it will fight me every inch of the way, because chicken wire's like that, and it'll probably fight you as well, unless you're a Unless you're a, a chicken, chicken wire whisperer, and I wish I was, because otherwise it just fights. So the whole idea is to make a single cylinder. So you want to bring your edges up so that they come together with just a little bit of overlap. But you also want to line the holes up a little bit so that the If you can see here, I'm going to line these long pieces here, the twisted pieces, I'm going to line those up so that they don't look untoward 
and I'm going to line the holes up so that we've got a little bit of overlap. So you see here we've got we've got the two piece two holes lining up and I'm going to get my pliers and I'm just going to take one of the wires over through the hole under and back up again. I'm not going to finish this off yet because I don't want it completely done but you can see now when I let go that that's starting to to hold in place. So you've got lots of little ends. When you cut your chicken wire, make sure that you've got little end pieces sticking out here because you're going to use these. If you haven't got little end pieces, you can cut into the wire and loosen them out so that they're not just V-shapes. But it is better if you can have little end pieces like that. So it, when you, you're cutting your wire, if you just snip it in the middle of the hole, in the middle of that twisted wire, that's the best place to do it. But you do need these little end pieces because they're what you're going to use to fold over and connect your two sides together so that you can make this cylinder shape here that's going to become the bee's body and head. So what I'm going to I'll do a few for you. I'll pick some, I'll attach both ends first so I've got less chance of it pinging out all over the place. So what I'm doing is I'm aligning the holes here so that they're nice and then what that does it just allows the eye not to see where the connection is just makes it flow a little bit better and I'm just going to take one of these ends and I'm going to fold it under and through the hole back up the other side so that again it just holds <coughs> holds the body in place there now this has got to be done the length of the B because it needs to have that structure. So I'm going to go to the middle. I'm going to do a few more and then because it is just going to be repetitive, once you know how to do one or two, you'll be able to do all of them. So don't, don't worry about me skipping to the end because you won't miss anything. Um, all, all you'll miss is me repeating exactly what I've said before and that's going to get monotonous. It's not monotonous when you're sitting working, as you can see it is fiddly, it's fighting. So it's not monotonous when you're working but it, it can be when you're just watching it on the telly. So I'm going to take one of the ends of the, the chicken wire edge and I'm going to fold it under. Now I've got the holes lined up and then I'm going to pull it through the hole. So it's just an, an over and under really, like that, and that's connected the two together. <clears throat> then I can go to the other end of the hole, to the piece of wire that's underneath, hold it where I want it, and then I can just bend it over. That one's a lot shorter, so I'm just going to pull it through the hole, bend it over, and push it through and squeeze it tight to, to settle it in. Now this one's got an end on it and I'm just going to carry on rotating that through. So you just carry on going all the way through like that until the wire runs out and it's nice and neatly, there we go, nice and tight and neat there. Now you're not going to get it perfectly aligned, don't worry about that just as aligned as possible as you can. So if I show you another one, just one for good measure. So we take this one, so they've got an end piece here that's sticking out. I'm going to go down into the hole, push it into the hole, grab your pliers, there it is, push it into the hole, grab my pliers, pull it through, pull it up, um, Bring it over the top. I tend to be a little bit ambidextrous with pliers, so I'm quite lucky. Sometimes you have to move your hands around a lot to, to get into the right place so that you can come around and under and move things. So that's going down there, and I've just neatened that off there. And then on the other side, on the underneath piece, I'm going to put that in place, hold it where I want it, 
which is about there. And I'm going to pull the wire through the top hole, it's over the top of it, bend it round, bend that little piece of twisted wire round, and then give it a helping hand through the hole and bring it up the other side like that. And that's attached there as well. So for each where the overlap is, where these uh, edges are meeting, well not they're not meeting but where, where they, they are through the holes, pull them through the holes or push them through the holes, wrap them around the wire and then you're going to have a nice sturdy seam line almost and then it'll be a, a complete cylinder without any uh, without any wire sticking down underneath and hopefully as you can see here when I've joined it it kind of flows a little bit you can't see the um, the overlap so much a bit further down where the overlaps not quite so neat just here you can see two lots of wires so I might have a, a stretch and a manipulate and try and get those to line up a little bit more when I put them on but when they're, they're nice and matched, the eye doesn't see where the overlap is as easily and it'll be nice and tidy then when you, when you come to put your bee and make his head and make his bottom. So there you go, that's that. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to run down each one of these, rotate the, the end of the wire and make sure it, pull it through the hole, push it down through the other side and make sure it's nice and tight and give it a squeeze. So get going on that. When you're finished, you should have a complete line and all attached onto your bee. So I'll see you in a minute. Right now, what you should have is a completed seam down the middle of your, your bee here, like this one, and a complete cylinder that holds together and rolls around on its own because it's all attached. So now what we need to do to make the end of our B, because your B bottom here and your B head at this end needs to be rounded and, and closed in. And to do that, if you hold your cylinder in front of you with the seam on top, now I'm left handed, so a lot of the stuff I do is going to be left handed. Sometimes I'm right, but sometimes I'm not. Um, what I've done is I've cut loose an extra long bit of, I just cut into the side of one of the hexagons and cut an extra long bit of wire available so that I can use that for tying onto the top bit when they come together. So you want to do that at, with your seam on top, across that horizontal there you want to get an extra long one here. If you've got loads of um, wire that you can fold with anyway that's fine but I haven't got a huge amount so I've cut an extra long one for security. Now seam is on top down the length and I'm going to pull together the two sides like that, hold them together, pinch them together and then take this extra long piece, just doing it so you can see it while I'm, while I'm still doing it pinch them together and then take this extra long piece of wire and loop it round the chicken wire loop on the other side. So go through the hole round and under. You can always tidy up loose bits later but by going down through the hole and under on the other side you come up and it starts to attach together into this sort of cushion shape as you can see you've got a figure eight here and it's kind of pinching it together at one end. Then what you want to do, and I will do this with um, in more or less real time I think because it does get quite complicated, at least on the one side. Pinch it together a second time and I can't see, I'm going to get my wire cutters in. Again I've only got these, these short bits of wire at the end here so I'm just going to stick a cut in in the middle of the twisted wire, cut it through pull it out and that gives me two, here and here, it gives me two nice um, long pieces that I can attach to the other side. So with the first long piece I'm going to come up and over in through this top piece, through the hole, down through, pull it through underneath, 
I'm not going to worry about ends at the moment except that they might scratch me. So I've got a second one done. And you can see this is forming a triangle here. And this we don't really want this, this is a bit of excess. So you want to cut across your chicken wire to get this. So you want to go across your chicken wire to cut this excess corner off here, like that. And it just gives you a much neater circle when you attach it together. So I'm just gonna cut along that line like that through where your seam is as well. Up the other side, you see, you've got little bits of wire flirting off everywhere. That's why you've got your, your glasses on. And I'm going to cut that little bit off, and you can see this has got this has got the pointy end, and this one now has got a much rounder end. I've got my magnetic tool, just pick up that bit of wire, get it out of the way, and then what you're going to do is pinch this round end together as well. So if you've got if you've still got so mine's coming together a bit, put that through there, and just take my cutters out of the way because I don't need those for a second, but I will need my cutters again because I can already tell, there we go, that I've got, I've still got a little bit too much here that I need to get rid of so that I can just bring this together. So I'm just going to take these off as well, I'll leave some Turn these over. I'll leave some wires because you can always tuck wires in or cut them off when you're ready. So I'm just going to tidy that up neatly there. That's all the cast off so it can go out of the way as well. Less danger to me. Right. So the idea is you want a fairly smooth, or at least you don't want a, a sharp corner like this but you want to try and cut this corner off so it's a bit smoother. We can manipulate it in a bit so it doesn't have to be perfect yet. At the moment we're just trying to tuck these in, fold your wires under, and pull them through. You can do it even, this is a, a really short one, they are a little bit more fiddly, but they're not too bad. You can still get a good purchase, sorry left hand. Um, you can still get a good purchase with your, your little wires. And then this corner bit, I think I'm just going to fold those this way and to attach them. I'll probably attach those together a bit. Give them a bit more stability. So I'm just going to attempt. Sometimes the wires will come off. Some of the chicken wire wires will, will separate. When you, once you've cut them. Um, no, those are just going to be too small, I think. So I'm not, too, I'm not going to worry about those. I'm just going to tuck those in. So I'm just going to get the pliers on the inside and pull them over and tuck them in so they're not, they're not sticking out anyway. So what I've got now is I've got a, an attached, get this one and uh, I think I might trim that one. No, I'll bring it under for another turn. Just got a really long pieces getting in the way. But this is what chicken wire's like. You kind of have to some of it to an extent you have to make it up as you go along because it'll never it'll never be the same. You can always do something different on you. So there we go, so I've got that through again. And I'm just gonna trim that extra long wire there. Put your hand over when you're trimming because things tend to flirt up in the air. Right, so that's, it doesn't look brilliant yet, but we are starting to get there. I just want to try and fold a few things over here to connect them better. Maybe, if I can. So we've pulled that out, because I've pressed, see I've pressed the wire in while I've been working on it. And what I really need is it is it out so that I can fold another wire. And it is it is just a feel sometimes of where you need to put your, your connections in or where you can put your connections in and your loops and, and fold your wires over to get them to, to go together. 
Right, I'm fairly happy with that side. It will change a little bit in a minute because I'm going to wrap this one round. Bring this one here so you can see. I'm just going to wrap this one round a bit more and tuck it in. That's that long one that I created. It'd be good to have a to have a good firm loop on that. That's it. So that's just keep it going till it kind of happy. You then need to do the same on the other side, but I'll just show you how to roll this this side out at the moment. And you do need to be careful with what you're wearing up your arms. You can see I've already got scratches, so I do recommend wearing something a bit better than uh, than bare arms or. Um, or a, a knitted jumpers are terrible because it'll just pull the, the wool. But what I'm going to do is just put that, that corner there and press down on it so that it folds in a bit. And I'm just going to use the table to shape that corner into more of an oval shape and a bit more rounded and a bit more. So you see, I'm just pushing it with the with my hand on the inside. It does get a bit tough when you do the second end because you won't be able to get your hand inside for that one but we'll, we'll show you how to do that in a second. So then just roll it out. Make sure your surface is okay for working on because it can mark it. So that you've got a nice rounded corner like that. So just do the same with the other edge here. Uh, bring it together cut your corner off, fold all your wires underneath and then once you're happy round it out, you just end up fiddling, I'm just fiddling there, um, just round it out the same so that you end up with something that looks a lot more like that. Okay, I'm going to go away and do this second one and then I'm going to just make a, a start and get this one pinched together and then we'll, we'll show you what we need to do with that one as we go through. So you go away, do, do your connections, cut your corners off, fold them in, get them connected and then crush them down and mould them down using the table and your hand on the inside to get the edge. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so now you should have a nice rounded end like this and quite... quite uh, smooth and circular and then you've got your other end to do next so again I would pinch it together you pinch this one here so I would pinch this one in the same place so there and there so you've got the same sort of rather rather than doing it on the seam I wouldn't you see that twists it a little bit weird so keep your seam at the top seam at the top again and pinch your sides in and don't forget I haven't done it here but if you need a, an extra long piece to attach things together give it a snip fold out a, an extra piece like like this one here and then you can push that together because you've got your seam on your top that says seam on the top bring it together and do the same again like you did with the other end so I'm just going to do a few of these and come back to you in a second. So I've attached this together, I've just done two or three along here and we need to start doing the corner again. So it's the same thing as before, we need to cut this corner off. So I'm just going to grab the corner and cut roughly around here. No real way of it says it's come off. And then we can start attaching these together and maybe taking a little bit more out at this end, possibly just to take those. I'm just going to take those twisted ones off because I think it will it'll fold a lot easier if they're not there. Yeah, that did go through. That's when your gadget comes in useful. Take that out of the way. 
Right, so now what we need to do is bring these bring these in together so we can use the pliers. Just uh, twist your wires in through the hole, up through the other side so that they're connecting together and hold your hold your whoops. <laughs> It's alive already. Hold your chicken wire together so you can so you get it round. Press it together over and under. Pull it through the other side. Set. And then let's do this one on the end as well. Up and over. Up and over and through. Like that. Now I'm just going to do this quickly. Uh, that one as well. This one's sticking up, so I want this to come through and attach under here. So I want this to come through and attach through here. And I think this is quite big. I'm just going to fold this over and hook it through like that. So it looks a bit more like I folded that bit over and touched it through. So now we can't get a hand up the inside and we need to have a look at what we can do to um, attach one of those. So uh, what we can do to round it out. So again, I'm just going to put this in place to protect my table. Um, we can gently push down on the corner to bend it in, but it's better we can do some of it with our, our hands and our fingers if we can. So we need to bend these over, hold them over like that, and also pull them out a little bit so that they round and aren't so much of a, a point. So we can, and it is just, just manipulating the wire. I don't like that one, it's going too far in, so I'm going to pull that out to the outside um, and the leather gloves really do give you the opportunity to press quite hard um, if you if you're feeling the the chicken wire through your leather gloves and you need something a bit thicker I'm afraid because the chicken wire will let you know that it's uh, it's being used so just try and round out get your fingers in through the holes a little bit and just try and round out Use the table, use, use your fingers, anything really, it's just, it's just a form of, of sculpting it. And then what you can do as well, is you can get your pliers and grab and just lift things out and fold things under if, if they're in the wrong place. So that you start to get the sort of shape that you're after. That's it with that there. So you start to get, I think you can see now that you're starting to get this rounded shape again. And then this is tucked, this is in a bit so I'm going to pull it out, hold the other wire in place, pull that out, make it a bit more rounded. So the the difference now is you can't you can't be inside so you have to do it from the outside. So you can either lift with your, your pliers, um, you can get your fingers in and lift it out or you can use the table again just to push down and help help mould it how you want it. So once you've done that side, you can get on with the other side. I'll go and do that and I'll come back to you in a minute and we'll finish off by putting the, the head shape in place. Okay, see you in a second. Now I've done the second corner as well here which is still a bit, a bit lumpy, as you can see. Um, and I've also got sort of a, a V-shape here, a very pointy bit. I just wanted to show you that that's, don't worry about that, that's not too much of a problem because it's just all about the shaping now. So, where well, you've got your V-shape where the wires are close together, just lift the wire out. And what happens is that V-shape starts to, to disappear a bit. Let's get my left hand for it. 
so the V shape starts to become a rounded sort of try not to, to distort the the hexagon shape of the chicken wire too much just do it with the without opening the pliers if you want to and this just starts rounding out a little bit and then on this side I just need to take the table a little bit just push that down pull that up fold that over so it really does if you if you get weak up press things together with your, your fingers, you can get your, your pliers out. This looks a bit flat so I'm just going to pull it upwards. Careful when you're pulling upwards that you don't um, push down somewhere else. It's always a problem. Then with this you can, you can start to flatten it so it rounds out a lot more. Yeah, that's it. And you can just pull things up, push things down move them out um, and it will take time um, I'm not going to go into full time here on how long it takes but just sort of try and show you the sort of things that you can do to to help it go where you want it to go and look the way you want it to look it's all about sculpting it really there we go it's starting to become something like I want it now and about the same as on the other side. There you go. Chuck that under there. Doesn't want to go. I'm going to chuck that under there instead. Right. So I've now got a big lozenge shape. It shouldn't really look like a bee yet. So the idea, if you grab your ruler, which you should have fairly local to you, and measure the length of your bee. So I've got him at, so from there, he's 30, he's about 36, which is quite nice actually, because um, what you want is two thirds, two thirds and a third. So you want to find out where the two thirds mark is, or one third this way. So. Um, 12 centimetres this way, 24 centimetres this way on mine, but you're going to have to measure yours because yours may come out a little bit different to mine. So I'm going to grab my marker pen and I'm going to measure roughly, try and get over the top of it so we get a true sort of measure, round about the 24 mark is round about there. I'm just going to make a mark on the chicken wire so I can find it later because sometimes it does disappear. Right, so I've got my mark on my chicken wire, which is just here. Does that look about right for the length of the bee and the head? I think it's round about the right sort of place. I don't suppose the bees go around measuring themselves either that often. So with that as your, your guideline, stick your thumb on it and get it in like a what I can only describe as a strangle hold really and, and just squeeze and what you're doing is you're forming the neck so I'm just squeezing the wire in and I'm going to, because you get a, a bit of a lump forms here so I'm going to sort of try and squeeze that lump in as well and the lump on the other side that's formed and all I'm, all I'm really doing is just squeezing the wire, distorting the wire so that we get a neck. So if you can see I'm just around like that and I'm just getting a bit of a neck forming. There we go. tell from this one he's got a smaller head than the last one I made because they all come out slightly different. There we, we more or less have it. Um, some places I'm, I'll probably try and straighten up the, the kinks a little bit to make it a little bit neater. Other places there are loose bits of wire that I just want to tuck over and neat knob that have moved from previously and I've got a little bit just here it looks a bit strange so I'm going to just open that out a little bit and make it a bit smoother so it's it's about playing around with it how you want it 
I'm going to bring that bit up a little bit because it looks weird. Take that bit down a bit because it looks better if I do. And then take that in. And the, the aim of the game is to get a nice neck on it. If, they, if you then find, like I've now got a bit of a point here that I don't really like. So yeah, I'm just going to move these out. And be careful you don't push down somewhere else when, you, when you're pulling out. So when you've done one manoeuvre you might find you've got to go back and that's sticking out a bit so I'm just going to push that down and just keep going round and going round. I'm going to round that out a little bit. Oh, pushed it in too far there so I'm going to pull it out again. And it's just a matter of getting it how you want it really. Um, and I'm almost happy with that now, looking a, a lot better than it it was when I first did it. Attach some of these loose ones around that you've got. I've got a little bit of dent there, so I'm going to bring that up. And the wire will, will keep moving for, it will eventually go very hard and, and unmovable, but it will keep moving for a good time while you're just trying to get to get this kind of shape that, that you want for your bee. Because they're all going to be, huh, they're all going to be different. But what you're after is something like that, and that is a great basis. You can keep, you can, I tell you, you can keep fiddling with it for, forever. Um, but that is what you want, if you can see them all the way through. It's rounded, it's kind of rounded at this end, I might round it a little bit more. Um, but that's your basic bee body with your bee head. So, if you've got any comments, do leave them down below, any questions, and I'll get back to you and answer whatever I can, or do a short video, or whatever. Um, and if you want to see the rest of the videos as they as they go live, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the, the notifications next to it, and that will come up on your, your notifications board in YouTube. Okie dokies, so I'll see you for the next video, and happy making!